and then everyone else decided to run with it and change it up and do it differently. But I was the guy who made What? It. Patrick Emerson, the final kid talked about dropping um, uh, KG. Okay, cool. Let's fucking stop um, DSP. He's talking out of his ass. Let's switch tact. Thank you, Patrick Emerson. Let's check that out right away. I want to see this right fucking now. Oh my God. What the fuck has happened? Let's see what they said here. Let's see what they said here. Let's see what they fucking said here. I've already got, okay, let's get some, let's get some, let's get some guesses. Let's get some predictions here. I said previously, Brendan most likely is going to say that they came to a mutual agreement to let go of George. That's my prediction. My prediction is Brendan's going to say it was a mutual agreement. Um, me and George were talking all the time. I was on the phone to his mom. We are good together. He's going to say something like that. That's my theory. My theory is going to say something along those kind of lines. Me and Thing are fine. It's perfectly okay. There's nothing wrong. Blah, 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 blah. He'll try and make complete light of the situation. That's my theory. What do you guys think in the stream chat? I think that's what he's going to say. He's going to try and make light of it. Or he's going to try and lie and say it never happened. And people are making it up. Even though Brian Callen fucking confirmed it, right? So let me see, actually, if I can find the original email. BGL somehow got in touch with George's mum. And this is what happened, right? So some email is here. And this is BGL talking to George's mum. Please send me the DM. George's mum. Well, guess what? Brendan's lawyer, <laughs> Brendan's lawyer, all one word, just called George and they let him go. They said they can't afford to pay him, which is funny, right? Imagine you say you can't afford to pay somebody and then you've got this in your driveway. Imagine you say you can't afford to pay somebody and you just go out and you buy this. So after you fire somebody, you go and buy a Dodge Demon 170, which is allegedly going way above the fucking manufacturer's recommended retail price of like a hundred fucking dollars. It's selling for 300,000. Even if you got a good deal with that guy at the chop shop, whatever it may be, he probably paid somewhere north of 150, north of 150 grand for this car. Maybe it's financed, who knows? But still, he's got a ton of cars already. He added this car to his fleet because Rogan's got it. But then he buys this after firing somebody because he can't afford to keep them on. Can you imagine how much that would absolutely piss you off? Okay, cool. Anyway, um, he can't afford to pay him. What the fuck? Wow. Now George. George has to figure out. This is B this is George's mum crying to BGO about this, right? George has to figure out how to get back home. Um, um uh home on what little savings he has. Wow, life is really strange, and so are people. So BG so Brendan fires George just before Christmas because he he allegedly cannot afford to keep him as an employee at Fick Boy, even though he said he does a good job there. Then soon after, he buys a Dodge Demon 170, one of the rarest cars out there, especially since Dodge are going to stop making these cars soon. I read somewhere, I saw some YouTube videos, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they're not going to be making these as, as often as they are. So they're, they're in hot demand, there's not many of them available, they drive really fast, they've got an amazing range of, you know, really high horsepower, all that fucking good shit, they do wheelies, Rogan speaks about them, great muscle cars, everybody's fucking creaming their nuts over them. So Brendan goes and buys it even after saying that he can't afford to keep this guy on right he can't afford to keep this guy on but he ends up buying this fucking car can you fucking imagine that right then people call him out and say fix it with george that shit wasn't right and brenda replies in the comments and says not sure what dumbass you're getting your info from kg still works for me <laughs> right that's what brenda basically says like you guys are lying i didn't say he's not working for me we're perfectly fine stop lying on me stop lying on me stop lying on me right but of course of course brian callen ends up being the person that fucking clarifies everything by answering the fucking email that BGL sent. I wish I could fucking get it. I wish I could get this email. Even though we've got evidence that BGL's mum said what she said to, to BGL in the DMs, that could have been finagled. But BGL was a very smart guy. He sends out a mass email, right, to all of those guys. And somehow, for some reason, Brian replies to the email and says, I didn't fire George. Like, Look what he so basically confirms it. Brian Callen, actually, 
I didn't hire him, nor do I know he was fired until Lex let him go. And apparently we are still paying him. I'm also not talking to him. I'm also now talking to him to try to find him some work. I called him the second I heard. Remember, he's not my employee. <laughs> Brian doing the same thing he did to Chris to George. He's throwing George under the bus. He's feigning ignorance. Chris Delia wasn't my friend. I never knew Chris. We never hung out. We were never boys. I know. I don't know anything happened about Chris. I don't even know who Chris is. I don't even know his fucking surname. I've never been to his house. We're never boys. He did the same thing to fucking George. What a piece of shit. Remember, he's not my employee, but I care about the kid, obviously. So trying to help in any way I can. If you have any ideas, give them to me. He's now asking BGL to crowdsource to help him fucking brainstorm job opportunities for fucking Keto George. Like, go and do yourself a fucking favor, you absolute mongrel. So anyway, um, that's that's what Callan says. Next fucking DM, obviously, BGL goes up and says what he says. So, all of that to say, I'm curious to hear what these guys said about George. How are they going to explain it? This is the first time I'm watching it. We're going to react to it live live via the power of the internet my prediction is brendan's gonna try and downplay it and try and make it seem as if george and him came to an agreement you know me and george we're always on the phone we talk all the time i was actually on his phone to his mum. um joanna was speaking to his mum all day his wife has come to the fuck you know he's gonna make up something he's gonna try and make it seem like it was a mutual agreement but then i'm pretty sure as per usual same thing that happened when the whole kalila thing happened Brian's going to come to his defense because there's one thing about Brian. He knows where his bread is buttered. Brian knows where his bread is buttered and he knows without Brendan, Ka Brendan Callan, Bren Brian knows without Brendan Shaw, his career would be mute, especially post rape allegations. Brendan's the main reason why Brian has any kind of podcast career because Brian on his own, he's got too many fucking failed projects. He's never fucking followed through on. So I'm pretty sure Brendan's going to try and downplay it and try and make it seem like it's all a big lie and a big misunderstanding and him and George are fine. And they came to mutual agreement to part ways. And then I'm pretty sure I've got a feeling that Brian's going to jump in and basically use his body as a human shield and basically say it was his fault or something. I, I don't know. Brian, Brian does that a lot. He's going to try and come in and fucking help Brendan out because he knows where his bread is buttered. He knows without Brendan, he doesn't have any money to pay his alimony and support his fucking second family. So that's what I think is going to happen. But let's see. Enough talk. Let's play the video. Let's see what they say here. Let's see what they say here. Okay, four, okay, 14 minutes. Okay, thank you, Severa Design. Thank you, Severa Design. You're a fucking legend. Thank you so much for that. They're gonna are back in town. Boys are back in town. You and I didn't really wish each other a Merry Christmas or a Happy New Year because we don't do that kind of friends, stuff. Friends, I don't have... Because you hardly talk to each other and you're not actually friends. friends. I don't have any good friends texting that stuff. But Happy Some New business Year. people text me, which is nice, but yeah. as far as... Friends, friends? Be no, we don't. Be because you're not actually friends. That's the reason. You don't talk to each other outside of the podcast. <laughs> and the uh, relationship has been severely damaged ever since the fucking cancellation of Chris and Brian's rape allegations. Like, it's never been the same again. The power imbalance has shifted back to Brendan. Brendan's a boss. Brian Callan's his employee. And they both just put up with each other. That's the main fact of it. Oh, the mustache is gone. He's got a beard now. He's, he's let go of the mustache look. He's fed up with it. The, the that beard is returned interesting you I, do we even do happy birthday not really uh, if you see like oh happy not, birthday man not, but you never text really. hey hold on can we no I, do you, hold on what now the, do you steal those from oprah okay now hold on these were given oh me. i know where i know where those I was, yeah. i've been in the hospital the last eight days 24 yeah. 7. did you steal those from the nurses at the now, NICU now hold on Brennan, those are the Gaylord are, Fokker special. I don't know. I think these are super streamlined and they look dangerously neutral. Hey, look at me. Yeah. They look so gay. <laughs> hey, look at me. Those look no, like no. you're confused. I love how we're starting off 2024 with the same level of, you know, um, hilarious fucking rib splitting humor we're used to from these guys. Gay humor right gay jokes dick jokes are probably going to be soon coming you know there's going to be some something relating to cucks happening very very soon i love it the same humor you know and love from two middle-aged men with families coming at you live and direct from thick boy studios love it love it love it 
It's about your pronouns. Well, now that's different. Now maybe they look a little gender neutral. That's what I was saying. Oh, they might oh you know what those are? Those oh, are the oh, female oh. or male shoes. Yeah, and these are the where ones it's like that go, it's for everybody. They came with my Tesla, my Tesla oh, Three. I knew it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew it. Yeah, they're the cuck shoe, and so there we go. We cuck. Cuck references. Let's wait for the dick reference too. Let's wait for the dick references as well. Come on, let's wait for some sort of dick thing. Come on, give us, give us some dick sucking references. Come on, all come right, on. And that's Cucks why are us. Cucks are us, and that's why I keep my little feet like that, and I can do. No, that. seriously, what are you doing? All right, look, they were given to me by somebody for Christmas, and I find them very comfortable. comfortable. And I actually thought you'd be like, those are cool. Kicks. Oh no, I don't know. No, it's uh, we're talking. I, I before we got started, I looked down and went, whoa. I looked at him and I went, maybe I'll wear these to see what Brendan thinks. Maybe he'll think they're cool kicks, but they're not. Yeah, they're not fake Jordans. That's why. Don't worry, Brendan. If you, Brian, if you buy some reps, maybe Brandon will, re will respect you. But if you don't have any cool fake reps, he won't respect you. No, they're like they're nurses. Not. And then they're like this weird off brand. And they're also it? super cheap. I guess they're made of recyclable material. Oh, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Way too, they're a little too comfortable. You know what I mean? Hopefully they're like it little rain. pillows on hey, my feet. Hopefully it doesn't rain. Yeah. Those things are going to melt like a fake rolex well i you know when i wear them hey I will man say this. hey guess what guess what i'm bored already of the intro let's skip to the 40 minutes big up severe design i'm already bored of the actual podcast let's skip to actually 12 let's go to about 12 let's see what they say here all this fucking small talk avoiding the elephant in the room let's skip to what the actual meat and potatoes of the story is let's see how deplorable these guys are a little too much like but you're height and weight, dude. You'll be around for a long. You're so skinny. Yeah, yeah. yeah you look, skinny people live forever. I'm pretty healthy. I you're have a lot of energy. Genetics too. I have shitloads of energy. Yeah. You know, I, I really do. Like uh, Rogan was talking about me. He has all that energy to rape and stuff, isn't it? Allegedly, that's where the energy comes from. That's what happens when you take people's souls through um, forced interactions of. In the sexual nature <laughs> you take all their energy it's sort of like a sex vampire you know that's why he has all that energy allegedly that's what i've heard I'm not just sure if that's true but i read that somewhere on wikipedia i think with derek from more plates more dates and he was alluding to the fact that guys like me don't have the energy he has i have all the energy i'll put my energy Wait, he was saying guys anyone. like you yeah he said because he, he wants because he said is brian Callen on trt yet and, oh, and Joe said no. He says his testosterone's high, and which it is. But I'm gonna get another read of my testosterone. I love if t I, I want the I want the place more dates guy to do a breakdown of Brendan and figure out if he's on Ozempic or not. That would be really good. <laughs> figure out if Brendan is up on Ozempic, please. That would be really good. Let's do that video. Testosterone. So the past two testosterone. I don't give a fuck what your testosterone high. says. I mean, Joe included. I don't know anyone with more energy than you. No. Joe said you don't have energy. Yeah, yeah. Well, he thought I would. He, he was like, some of these guys break down after doing two shows a night. Come hang with Callen me. Callan does it. Come hang with me. Oh, I'll you're, shoot the, all. you're the worst example. For I'm the that. worst example. No, I'll work out for that's two like, hours. That's like looking at. I've got so much. Look, what is this wank off session about energy? What the fuck are we doing? What are we talking about? I have all the energy. I have energy, bro. You don't do anything. You guys barely work. You record like three hours of content a week. You do like two shows a fucking weekend. Like relax. These motherfuckers are acting like they're fucking going on a world tour every fucking single week. You perform within the radius of fucking California. At most you have to get a fucking plane to another state. Let's chill the fuck out a bit, you know? Let's chill out. Let's fucking chill out here. You're not running a fucking marathon in under an hour. Let's fucking relax. What kind of energy you have? Let's relax. Let's rein it in a little bit, lads. Come on. DK Matt Ka Metcalf and being like, dude, just eat gummy bears in one meal a day. Yeah. You're going to look like I'm that. I'm the wrong guy. To, I'm no, the wrong you're, guy. You're the awful I'm example. I'm the wrong guy yeah, yeah. to fucking try to match energies with. You're not no, being that. That's a terrible that. idea. I'm the wrong guy. In endurance or any of that, it's going to be a long day for you. That's what? weird, Rogan. Out of all of his friends. Well, he just. With low I know, energy? I, Rogan. Oh, my God. We started off the podcast already talking about dicks, talking about cucks. Talking about, you know, being anti-woke and all that shit. And we already mentioned Rogan. Is there ever a podcast in the TFAT K fucking catalog where they don't mention Joe Rogan? Well, I think he was talking more about how he has a lot of people that he tries to... He, he's just a big believer in TRT. hormone support, especially as you get older, which he's probably right about. He's a big believer in hormone support. <laughs> is that another word for fucking being on gear your whole entire life? How long has fucking Rogan been on TRT? How long has Rogan been injecting himself with stuff? Probably most of his adult life, ever since he turned into like the way he looks now, right? Like how, has Rogan ever not been on stuff? Like fucking hell, bro. 
hormone support. <laughs> about which, uh, believe me, I'm I'm around the corner. See, I don't think you need it though. I like, don't. Why fuck with it? I talk to those. I talk hey, to Bubba, a team hey, of Bubba, scientists. You know why all Joe, myself, all of us are on it? Because we need it. Yeah. You don't need it. No, I really just don't. I don't. Joe and myself. I love how Brendan does that. Me and Joe and my Joe and myself. You know why people like me and Joe, the awesome people, the beast of dads, the beast of podcasters, the kings of content. You know why we need it? Because we're awesome. And we need to top up our levels of awesome. Because if we're not awesome, then how are people going to know we're awesome? <laughs> Talk to my wife. <laughs> Which one? Which one? <laughs> you know what I mean, Chen? Hey, Chen. Yeah. You know what I mean, right? I know what you mean. Chin, you know I'm fuck. sorry. I'm not Chin, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Chin, you're all quiet, man. His hair's all fucked up today. Yeah. Well, it's like oh, no, George. Look at that, man. He's not there. He's not there, man. He's not fucking there. One's in the chat for the fallen soldier, George. One's in the chat for the fallen soldier, George. He's not there anymore, man. The little fucking round face assassin is not there. The little round face gerbil looking assassin is not in the fucking chair anymore. One's in the chat for fucking George, the fallen soldier. R.I.P. to fucking George. R.I.P. Where's this working remotely thing gone? R.I.P. to fucking George. Sad to see. Let's see what they say. Are you a little depressed? I usually like. Are you okay? I'm not depressed, but obviously I'm a little sad. Why are you yeah, a little exactly. sad? You guys want to discuss it now? Oh, yeah, let's talk about it. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah oh! George. <laughs> They're so fucking wrapped up in their own fucking animus. They're so wrapped up in their own pride and ego. They're so wrapped up in their own lives. They genuinely didn't remember. <laughs> he was already a distant memory. George already didn't exist. <laughs> like, what? Who? <laughs> Why are you sad? <laughs> That's the same fucking reaction R Brian had when you got accused of rape. What? But I thought you loved it. You said you loved it. You said you enjoyed it. You said you wanted to do it again. <laughs> Who? Who's that? I don't remember her. <laughs> Holy shit. He's gone two minutes and they've already forgotten about him. Let's talk about George for a sec, guys. So there's been a lot of misinformation. Oh my George God. George did not get fired. No. George was- Why is Brian? Asked, why we, we, is Brian? We, we, why is Brian talking about this? Oh my God. Why is Brian taking the lead on this? No, Brendan's a piece of shit. Brendan is an absolute piece of shit. He fires George through a lawyer. He's that much of a coward. He can't even fire the kid directly. He hires him off of the back of him being this motivational guy, inspirational guy, because he lost a bunch of weight and stuff, right? And it's a very personal relationship. They start off talking to each other. He's fucking giving him all this praise. He's, you know, heaping praise on him. He's encouraging him. He's giving him confidence. They act like they're quote unquote friends and they're cool and they're nice to each other. You can clearly see George looks more up to Brendan than he does to Brian. So naturally, if that's the case and you want to let him go, you owe him a direct conversation like hey dude let's have a seat let's take a walk let's jump on a phone call or whatever let me grab you let me grab some dinner with you let's sit down let's grab a drink let me discuss some things with you i want to go in a different direction whatever you owe him that fucking direct conversation he doesn't do it he does it through a lawyer cool then he gets rumbled and exposed and he gets online and starts acting as if like what we heard isn't true then he has to explain it to the fans and instead of fucking owning up to his mistake or explaining it or not by the way you don't need to explain it if you don't want to you don't owe anybody any explanation of how you run your business you don't need to explain nothing to nobody but if you're going to talk about it talk about it why are you letting Brian fucking dive on the fucking grenade? Why are you letting him talk for you? All of a sudden, Brendan can't speak. The king of interruptions, the king of fucking, you know, asking 10 minute fucking questions. Now he's all of a sudden mute. Now he's deferring to fucking Brendan, Brian. Now he's looking to the side and waiting for fucking daddy rinks to fucking help him out. Come on, man. Need somebody with more experience in right now as Thick Boy's expanding into different areas. Yeah, when you have like full producer. Not a like 22 Casey, year old. No. Is, they're right. And so everybody loves George. So <laughs> what? <laughs> so first they can't afford him. First they can't afford to pay his salary. But now they want to hire a better person with more experience. 
Do they think they can? They do they think they can pay somebody the same? They were allegedly they were paying George a grand. As again, I don't know if the truth. This is the truth. I've heard stuff online. I've seen stuff on the Reddit. Allegedly, George was getting paid one thousand dollars in LA. One thousand dollars, I'd imagine, doesn't go far. In the same way as London, if you're getting paid one thousand pounds in London, you probably couldn't find a space to rent for 1,000. You couldn't even find a room, I don't think. I think most rooms in London go for like 900 plus, not including fucking bills. So you won't even be able to cover a room in London for 1,000 pounds. Probably the same in LA. Then allegedly he gets bumped up to three grand. Allegedly. That's why I heard as well. Not sure if that's true, but I heard he got bumped up to three grand. Who knows? But let's say he's in the, let's say he got paid two grand. Where are you going to find a person older than George who's going to take on more responsibility and be happy to get paid 2000 Where? Where? And we know through BGL and we know through the vlogs that Chin does that Brendan is very demanding. Brendan expects you to be on call 24-7. So he's going to pay you less than George or the same as George to do more work and to be on call 24-7. How does that make sense? You fire one person because you can't afford him, and now you want somebody with more experience to do more, to do more, to take more responsibility, but to do it for less. Like what? What? What I think you did was offered him a different uh, Lex, who runs the company. Lex you know, runs CFO. Offered yeah. him something else. Correct. You, you. Come on, man. Who the fuck is Lex? Lex did. Who, who is this? Lex fucking Friedman. Who the fuck is Lex? Lex didn't exist when he brought him on stage. When he used George as a fucking human prop. When he lose, when he used George as an applause break on his stage show to introduce to people and say, hey, here's this kid I've inspired. Look at how amazing I am because I've got this kid that, that likes me. I can't be bad. This kid likes me. When he used George as a human prop, where was Lex? Now all of a sudden when he got fires, it's not me, it's Lex. Lex was our CFO. CFO of what? CFO of a YouTube channel. CFO of a YouTube channel. Is that what you have? You have a CFO of a fucking YouTube channel. No wonder Brendan gets fucking scammed. He's got somebody claiming a salary as a chief financial officer of a fucking YouTube channel. Are you serious? <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? Maybe look at, the, maybe look at Lex. Maybe fire Lex before you fire George. Why do you have a CFO for a fucking YouTube channel? Why? Why? You are not a good person for that job to go and even talk to George because you're very attached to George emotionally. I'm going to speak for Brennan for a second. Guys. No. You're very but you owe him that. That's what being a leader is, Brian, you fucking idiot. That's what being an actual leader is. You have tough conversations with people. Especially if you have like five employees. It's different if you've got like a team full of like 20, 10 people. Fair enough. Then maybe you shouldn't be involved in that decision making process. But I honestly feel like if you're an actual leader, there is no shame in coming up to your employees. There's no dishonor. There's nothing bad in saying, hey, at this current moment, you're not the right fit for our company. I know we started off on the right foot, but now it's not going too well. We need to part ways. Even if that person is angry in a moment, later on, they'll be happy that you told them directly. There's nothing worse than hearing from people not involved in the situation or you hardly know, speak with somebody else that you do know. And again, I've been involved in like mass layoffs and I've been involved in mass layoffs where it's done very well and done very poorly. Most of the time when it's done poorly, it mostly comes because the communication isn't clear. The communication doesn't come directly from the owners or from the founders or from the people actually above you in terms of like managerial or responsible for you and stuff. That's when it kind of hurts. That's when it stings a little bit. That's when you can start to get in your head and figure all these other, you know, theories about what's happening. But when somebody actually comes to you directly and sits you down as a team, as a company and has that hard conversation, it actually can do you the world of good for your confidence after the fact because even if it hurts at the moment even if it's fucking gut-wrenching you're gonna be like you know what at least this person oh you know at least he or she was able to face me up as a, as a man as a human as an adult and say you know what here's the deal blah 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 and laid it out 
not fucking, you know, threw out their fucking lawyer who I don't even know, who I barely fucking seen and communicate that thing to me that way in a very sterile and dry way. No, actually, Brendan should have had that conversation with him directly because he's emotionally attached. That's what they should have had, a proper heart to heart. Who does he actually speak to emotionally anyway in the first place? He actually probably needs that more than anybody. Actually, lower your fucking guard a little bit and fucking humble yourself and speak to that guy, especially if it's a hard conversation directly. That's what you should have been happening. But again, what do I know? Very attached to him. Love George. You're yeah. terrible at any kind of, any kind of repositioning, firing, or anything. You're the worst. You're the fucking worst. It doesn't matter if he's the worst. You should have to have a conversation. So I've been with BGL. Who fired BGL then? Did Lex fire BGL? Did Brian fire BGL? Did fucking Chin fire BGL? Who fired BGL then? Who fired Malik? Who fired fucking Malik? Who fired special... Who fired um, MJ? So did all those firings get done by Lex? This mysterious Lex guy, did he fire everybody? Or did Brendan do it through text and stuff? So the one thing he's happy to admit he's not good at is firing people, is being emotional, is showing some sort of human emotion. Like, that's what you're not good at, allegedly, right? Allegedly, that's what this guy's not good at. Come on, bro. This is some bullshit, bro. This is some fucking bullshit. And it's so dumb as well. This is so inconsequential. This is so minor of a situation. People get fired every day. It's not a big deal. He could have he could have fired George because he doesn't like the he, he doesn't like the smell of his breath. He can fire him because his face is annoying. He could have fired him because he doesn't like how he walks, because of his loose skin, because of his annoying smile. He could have fired him for any reason. It's his his business. It's none of our business. But the way he's handling it is so fucking redacted, it does make you laugh. Because he has every right to fire him for whatever reason he wants to. But he's making it so much worse <laughs> with this explanation by letting fucking Daddy Rinks speak for him now. Now, all of a sudden, he's not interrupting fucking Rinks. Now, all of a sudden, Brendan has nothing to say. Now, all of a sudden, he's looking sheepish. Now, he's trying to look sad. Fuck off, man. And so having we know this about you so we have other people that actually run the mechanics and day-to-day -day operation of thick boy Correct. yes okay yeah. i'm done we have people we have people brian you work for thick boy you don't own it why is he acting like he owns it thick boy right you don't even you don't own it you fucking work for for brendan ever since brian got fucking accused of rape the, the the fucking power dynamic has really shifted in Brendan's favor. If I'm not mistaken, when Bren, when Brian got cancelled, didn't Brendan take more ownership of the fucking money they make? I think before it was 60-40, didn't he take 70-30 now? I'm pretty sure something like that happened. Again, I'm not sure if I'm like mistaken on my law, but the imbalance of fucking you know power and who has authority in a company or whatnot is mostly on Brendan. If anything... Brian is just a glorified employee. He turns up on Friday and the kid, and that's it. What else does he do? He doesn't edit. He doesn't submit. He doesn't probably submit ideas for fucking topics and shit. He turns up sometimes on time, records his podcast, and goes home. He doesn't do anything. So he's probably happy just let's get collecting a check. But now he's acting as if there's some like big corporation going on there. Everybody that's involved in in Thick Boy is in that room with a part apart from that other white dude that's you know sits on another computer. Everybody involved in Thick Boy is in that room. They're acting as if it's some like big fucking multinational corporation or something. Like, fuck off. I'm just speaking and you tell me when yeah. I'm wrong. So George is somebody all of us here care about. And, and right now, I think you guys offered George something else within uh, from the company. Else where he doesn't have to, because now he's killed himself coming in every day. Yeah, so he doesn't so want to do that. a different role. His thing was, it's not that he doesn't want to be here, but he has other opportunities. Okay, 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 okay. What the fuck is going on? They start off by saying that George isn't qualified for the role that they need. Thick Boy is expanding, it's growing, it's blooming into this big production company, this big fucking studio, this big network, and they need somebody to do more work. Need somebody that's more experienced. George is too young, right? Even though they got him on board because he's young and highly impressionable and would be happy just to be there. Now, all of a sudden, his age is a, a negative, right? He's not experienced enough. Cool. We're letting him go. But now, they're saying that George wanted to go because he's 
inundated with offers. Keo George, who no one fucking knows outside of this fucking podcast, has now got loads of people knocking at his door, offering to fucking, you know, take him up on his services of what? Editing TikToks and shit. Like, somehow he's in demand. That's why he's leaving. Because, you know, he, he needs to kind of fly. He needs to kind of grow and become the, you know, beast of a producer that he's destined to be. If he's so good, why don't you keep him? If he's so in demand, why don't you fucking keep him? Huh? Which well, I also help them facilitate. Right? Yeah. He has two good ones, uh, which I help him facilitate. So. So, so Brendan fired him. And now he's trying to get credit for helping him get jobs, even though he fired him in the first place. I'm the good guy here. Even though I fired him, I gave him other jobs. So I can't be the bad guy here. Even though I fired him before Christmas through a lawyer and then went out and bought a lime green Dodge. <laughs> I fired him, but now I bought him a Dodge. So you can't say mean things to me because I'm a good guy. Fuck off, bro. Why are they making this so difficult? If you fired him for every reason, hey, we went our separate ways. It didn't work out. We wish him all the luck. Um, hopefully, you know, when he gets more experience or maybe down the line, it's always, the door's always open. He's always welcome to come back here. Why is this all this, all these, all these fucking, all these pleas that they're copying just makes it seem like they're lying. Just be simple and plain and straight to the point. We went our separate ways because we need to, we need something, whatever. It's not that big. It's not that big of a deal. They're actually lying about something that doesn't need to be lied about. I understand. Like if he, if he, if those don't work out, he can come back here. You know that it's always yeah. open. I love George. I talked to. No, it isn't. Oh, see, he's gonna say it. He's gonna say it. I talk to George all the time. Me and George are good friends. Oh, let's see him say it. Like if he, if he, if those don't work out, he can come back here. You know that it's always yeah. open. I love George. I talked to George probably more than anybody in here. Besides oh, no! <laughs> classic, classic, classic. I talk to George more than anyone in here. He, I am his father. Me and George are boys. We always go to the pub, you know, me and George, knocking back the booze, knocking back the beers, having a couple bevies with the lads. Me and George, you know, on the strip, kitting up all the ladies and stuff, you know, playing a bit of pool, friends and darts, watching the football and stuff, you know. Yay. <laughs> You. Yeah, and I, I talk, talk to, to him too, and I'm gonna, we're, we're going to... I talk to him every day. If I can help no, you game don't. Plan, no, you don't. No, you don't. DMs don't count. Liking his fucking Instagram stories don't count. That's not talking to somebody every day. I talk to him every day. We're good friends. Dude, this is why people get... You know how far Georgie has... This is my conversation with today, me and him talked in person. You know how far Georgie has come? You got to think about it. I met George when he was 450 pounds on King and the Sting. He sent in a submission... Because my goal is to get down to 190. Okay, what does that have to do with anything? What does this have to do with anything? This is another misdirection. What does this have to do with anything? Blah, blah, blah. I'm a thick boy. I said, Georgie, you get down to 190, I'll fly you here live in studio. Year later, calls in, he's 190. We know the I story. I fly him in, he's such a good... Why do you, why if you, do you ever why meet you George, this? can't help but love the kid. Okay. Fly so him what, in here. So why do you fire him? If he's so lovable and he's so inspirational, why do you fire him? <laughs> if he's such a great guy and you talk to him every single day, why do you let him go? He's in the, allegedly he's in demand, but he's not in demand for you. I love him. I go, dude, come to San Antonio with me. Ever stay in a nice hotel? Never. Cool. It's the first time I'm on a plane too. <laughs> oh, I love the humble brag. I love the poor shaming and the humble brag at the same time. Right? He's never, he's never been in a nice car. He's never stayed in a nice hotel. He's never worn nice clothes. He's never had cool trainers. I did that. Me. <laughs> He's such a piece of shit. He's the kind of person that'll lend you his jacket and then tell the whole room he lent you his jacket. Hey, you know that jacket? That's mine. Those shoes, I lent him that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I lent him those shoes. They're good in it. They're nice, isn't it, right? I borrowed him those shoes. I don't really need them. You know, I've got so many shoes. <laughs> San Antonio, put them up at our favorite hotel, Hotel Emma. Give him of a course. Look at this. Praise me. I've got links at the hotel, Hotel Emma. We go way back. Great hotel, never been in presidential suite. He's living like a <laughs> oh, he's 
guys. Fucking impossible. King, bring him on stage. And then I was like, can't stop here, dude. I'll find a job for you. That's you. That's you. That's me. That's you. If you, you, you know, yeah, that's oh, look you. At this. And, but, what the fuck are they dude, doing? So he went from zero skills to... My like, brain is fucking bleeding out of my ears. That's you, Brendan. Hell of a great guy. Let me get on my knees and suck your dick. Let me suck your fucking dick. Great guy. That's you, Brendan. The best guy. Best guy. Great guy. Never fucking met him. Beast of a guy. Beast of an employee. Beast of a beast of a boss. Beast of a fucking husband. Beast of a <laughs> beast of a colleague. <laughs> beast of a comedian. Right? Some would say the bestest. <laughs> <laughs> he can Fun. edit now yep. he can cut clips he can do social media hey can you edit brendan can you cut clips can you do social media please let us know yeah he's but here's the problem with you here's the problem with you you get you get emotionally attached to every that's brendan's problem his emotions that's the main thing that's holding back brendan his emotions he's too in touch with his emotions he's an empath that's Brendan's real problem. He's a fucking empath, right? <laughs> he can't but help. He can't help but feel pain for the world. He works out sometimes in a cold sweat, clutching his chest, thinking, that's not nice. The pain of everybody around the world, that's not nice. I can't believe everybody's going through what they're going through. Like, it brings him pain. He gets, he falls to his knees when he thinks about George. He falls to his fucking knees when he thinks about all the great things he's done for George. Presidential suite, Hotel Emma, cool shoes, <laughs> flights, <laughs> money, a warm bed. He never had those things before me. He, he clutches his fucking chest. Everybody. Correct. I shouldn't be running and, business. And I, I also don't hire And anyone. I... I I what? You don't hire everybody? What? To everybody? Correct. I shouldn't be running and, business. And I, I also don't hire and I, 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 I shouldn't be running a business, but I'm a beast of a businessman. And I don't hire everybody. He said it in the same breath. He spoke out both sides of his mouth. The humble brag or the attempt at self-deprecation, I shouldn't run a business. I'm just so, I'm just so in touch with my emotions. I'm just so much of a good guy. I shouldn't have a business really, you know, because I can't be a capitalist pig. I can't be a shark because I just love people. I want to give people everything. But then on the other side of his mouth, I actually don't hire everybody. It's actually done by somebody else. It's actually Lex. It's actually that guy over there, that Lex guy who we don't know. It's him. So you run a big business where you've got all these big employees and you've got a CFO, but you also are too in touch with your emotions to hire anybody. Come on, man. Come on. You're lying. Unnecessarily, I think that is a liability for you yes. because sometimes you got, uh, yeah, I have a bad read. You know what's a liability? Trying to fuck your friend's wife. You know what's also a bad liability? Doing a show with a fucking known diddler. You know what's also a liability? Having a co-host that's been accused of fucking rape. That's a liability. <laughs> that's a liability. Big up NJ Ranger. Appreciate you, bro white version of profit on yucca power and wisdom exactly exactly it fucking exactly it fucking exactly it fucking exactly exactly on yucca fucking shorb on yucca fucking shorb if you know you know do your fucking googles Peter. well it's not that you're a bad reader dude you're just very optimistic We're not and talking I, about I, books. I, some job no, you are a bad reader. You're a bad reader. You can't read cue cards. That's why you're probably not on TV. You can't read books. That's why you sound the way that you sound. And you're a bad reader of people, right? Let's say that for sure. Putting all your fucking hopes and dreams and the long-term future in an accused, alleged rapist and somebody that's been accused of diddling in Crystalia is really bad business, especially when you've got a young family because at any moment, somebody could come out with another allegations and that whole fucking you know car, house of cars that is known as thick boy could come tumbling down that is really bad business to be honest that's why most people in hollywood in la have run a mile from brian and from chris Alea because guess what bitch you guessed it they're looking after their family they're looking after their fucking partners they're looking after their kids private school tuition fees and that that's what they're doing but these guys nah
Obs, if you're running this a company, you you are going to need a 30 year old person who has a lot of experience to run shit, it. and you have to be a do fucking, background check. They have a YouTube channel. They have a glorified YouTube channel. That's it. They do the same content on every single show. Just a couple of middle-aged men talking into microphones. Better cameras than mine. Better lighting in the studio somewhere. But it's the same thing. Even Food Truck Diaries doesn't even exist anywhere. That's, that's the, the different show, but that's gone. Every piece of content they do involves them sitting in front of a camera pontificating about life. Why do they need to do background checks on that? Why? Why? It could be argued somebody that has a dodgy history is actually the only ones you're actually going to get to work at some, you know, hellhole that is Thick Boy. What person with an actual sound employment history will decide to work there? What person with actual career ambitions would think that's a good place to go and get a fucking, you know, to get your step, your foot on the ladder or somewhere? Why would you actually do that? Considering all the bad, you know, vibes around these guys and stuff and their reputations in tatters. And yeah, but you also have to be the kind of guy that is like people that run a business are the sharks. way more ruthless than you. And I'm not. They go, you. It's oh my God. Did he say in the other previous interview that he's a shark of a businessman? Didn't he say in that other interview with that guy that he's a shark? He's a business shark or something. Now he's saying he's not a business. You see what he does? When it doesn't serve him, all of a sudden he's this like sweet, innocent guy. Hey, I don't know anything about business. I'm just too emotional. I'm too much of an empath. I just connect with people too much. I just get too emotionally invested. I can't do it. If I was to confront George and tell him I was going to fire him, I would break down and cry. And I can't cry because of George. I can cry when Chris Delia gets accused of being a pedo. I can cry on air because I'm scared that people are going to come after me. Most of them crying about my best friend getting fucking accused of being a pedophile. I can cry about that, but I can't cry about fire my employee that's just something i can't do so i have to go and get lex to go and do it that's why i have to do it i'm just a poor little lamb i can't do that <laughs> it's like come on man what is this just the other day you're a beast of a businessman now look at you all of a sudden you can't talk now you're shy now you're biting your bottom lip like i, I just can't i just can't do it i'm just I'm just holding it all back in now. It's really tough. And um, it's, it's really, really tough to be me, to be rich, to be successful, to have all this money, to buy cars and to just be covering my, you know, my stay at home wife in Balenciaga and my kids, you know, just forcing them to be materialistic monsters that I am. It's just really, really tough. And I don't know. I'm just getting really, 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 really emotional thinking about all the tough decisions I have to make. Do I drive my Porsche? Do I drive my Lambo? Do I drive my Dodge? Do I drive my TRX? I just don't know what to do. Life is just so fucking difficult. It's so difficult to be a beast of a dad, to be a beast of a husband, to be a beast of a podcaster, and to be one of Joe Rogan's best friends. It's just so difficult. I just don't know what to do. Please, somebody get me more dollar bills to wipe my tears. More dollar bills to wipe my tears, please. <laughs> it's not working. You got to get out of here. Yeah, not, That's I, the way it's... I, I'm not like that. Oh. Not like that. Not <laughs> like that. Well, let me just tell you about Brennan. So hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, what, 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 way more ruthless than you. And I'm not. They go, you, it's not working. You got to get out of here. Yeah, not, That's I, the way it's... I, I'm not you like did, that. Yo, you are ruthless. Why did you get rid of Malik? You are ruthless. Malik was arguing back. Malik was pushing back. Malik was fucking openly laughing at you, mocking you, right? Clowning you, as podcasters are meant to do. You're meant to be comedians. You're meant to be ribbing off each other, right? Ribbing each other, poking each other, you know, pause. But you didn't like that. And you let go of fucking Malik because he fucking hurt your ego. You are ruthless when you want to be. Why did MJ get let go? Why did MJ get let go? Please. Why did MJ get let go, huh? Let's get to that. Let's get to that. Why did MJ get let, let go? Come on, bro. Where's Tank? Justice for Tank. That's ruthless. You buy a dog and then all of a sudden you get give the dog away. Or, it, or you fucking euthanize it. Why, where's Tank? That was ruthless. That was fucking ruthless. Big up Wingers Dingers. BBB Big Up has... Bendon being a beast of an employer. 
Bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese. Bean cheese, bean cheese. You know how it is. Big up Wingus McDingus, my guy. Bean cheese, bean cheese. Fired, hired, fired, hired, fired, hired. Right? <laughs> fired, hired, fired, hired. Love you, don't love you. Love you, don't love you. Huh? Ruthless empath, ruthless empath, ruthless empath. Look at Brian as well. Look at Brian getting on his fucking hands and knees and slobbing on Brendan. Let me tell you how amazing you are, Brendan. Brendan, let me tell you. Let me tell you just how great you are. Do you know how amazing you are, Brendan? Do you know if you had a little bit, if your hair was a little longer, if you had a little bigger tits, if you had a little bit of a perkier ass, that I would fuck you? Do you know that, Brendan? Do you know that, Brendan, that you'd be right up my alley? Do you know that I would leave my second family for you, Brendan? Do you know how much I love you? Do you know that? Fucking donkey. Come on, Brian. Not like that. Perfect. Not like that. Well, let me just tell you about Brendan. So just so people know the, the number of we don't care. We know already. We don't care. We don't fucking care. You can't convince us any different than what we see. We have too much information. We know exactly what he's like. We can't convince us. We're not fucking vulnerable little fucking comedians going to an open mic, willing to get some comedy time to suck your little wrinkled dick. We're not that easily manipulated. Do not try to do it, Lewis, like that. All right? We're not some fucking open micer or something. Come on, bro. Let me tell you about Brendan. Let me tell you about the stand-up music. Let me tell you about stand-up comedy. Let me tell you about how hard it is to make it. Let me tell you about um, how hard you have to work. Come talk to me in the toilets. Come talk to me behind the bins. Come talk to me behind this fucking velvet fucking curtain or something. Come on. Come talk to me behind here, young lady. How old are you again? 17? Perfect. Let's go. <laughs> people that we've had who we all love and they were all great but there were things sometimes where this person i'm not talking about george in this case i'm talking about in our oh in yeah oh, oh yeah you're not talking about george who else could you be talking about then malik Chappelle, mj special k evan the beard who else could you be talking about then tank who else could you be talking about then huh come on the netball girl who else could you be talking about then you haven't had that many employees bro you know fucking PepsiCo. You know fucking General Motors. Why are they going on as if like they have this high churn, high turnover? We're we're in a crazy industry. The markets, right? The, it's a bull market at the moment, right? The stock market's flipped on its fucking head, right? Like, come on, bro. You run a fucking podcast. Chill the fuck out. As we've been here, there were. I think we've had probably. I think eight or nine real discussions about you calling me and saying, <laughs> I don't know what to do with this person. They're not doing their job. And I, and I, and I, it's, it's driving me crazy because I'm paying them. Hey, 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 hey. That's not a, that's not a humble brag. If you keep employing terrible employees that you have to fire at some point, you look in the fucking mirror. At some point, you look in the fucking mirror. If you have five, terrible employees after terrible employees maybe it's you maybe you don't screen properly maybe you don't interview properly maybe your fucking job description is too wafty maybe you attract fucking grifters and leeches and fucking whatever maybe it's you maybe maybe who knows that's not a humble brag you know, I've just got a big heart and I just offer everybody a salary and every time I get burnt, but I just keep doing it again. That's not a good thing, brother. What kind of what, what kind of weird way is that to kind of feign some sort of like like you're some sort of humanitarian? As if you're running some sort of charity or something. Huh? Huh? A fortune. A fucking fortune. And I would be like, okay, and then what and would we always say? Like, what would we always say? Uh, and finish my say. sentence. You would go. Yeah, but you're not going to do anything. No, I'd say, and you know what we're going to do about this? Absolutely nothing. And you'd say, absolutely nothing. Because we'd, leave, can't him, we'd leave him on board. <laughs> I can't confront it, but if somebody wants to have, you know, if somebody doesn't want to have sex with me, I can cover their mouth and keep going. <laughs> but when I want to confront someone about not doing their job, suddenly I can't do it. I get really, really shy. But when I want to force somebody's, when I want to force my hand underneath somebody's skirt by fucking force, I just do it. <laughs> That's fine and easy. But when I want to fire somebody, I I find it completely difficult. <laughs>
for another year at least right until it gets so toxic or well, they whatever leave it is or something. whatever yeah. the case you know and, and that's not the way to run a business no, right sir. and so we have a 22 year old who we all care about who we are who we want. suddenly his age is an issue when he joined everything was fine but suddenly it's george's age is the main issue here his age he's just too young he's just too young <laughs> he's just too young when have, when have either of these guys ever turned down a 22-year-old? Hey, George, George is just unfortunate he's not female and hot. If George was hot and a girl, they would have never fired him. That's his problem. George was too ugly. If George was a bit cuter, he probably would have stayed. That's his main problem. George's ugliness is what fucking killed him. Not his inability to do the job. If George had perky little tits... If George had a weird little soft, wet mouth that's always kind of slightly ajar. If George kind of like had sweet, innocent eyes that were open and ready for possibilities and manipulation. If George walked around and swung that little, small little rump shaker around and bent over at the, at the waist to pick up trash and got the boys coffees and always got them wrong and was like, I'm sorry, I thought you wanted decaf. He would have still got the job. But unfortunately... He was a big, you know, round face, trailer trash white guy. And they don't need that around there, right? They don't need that around their parts, right? He's a regular dude, actually. George actually is a regular person. He's a regular person. <laughs> and they couldn't handle having them around. He's too regular. He was calling his mom. He had family issues. He had regular, regular guy shit going on. They couldn't handle it. <laughs> He was a reminder of like the regular struggle of the regular person. They w didn't want that around them. Oh, <laughs> it's too depressing. Oh my god, that was brilliant. Let's continue. Want to win, and he will win, and I'll do what I can. No, you're you know, not. To help him gain. No, you're he has not. A great resume now. His skills. And he's also a great kid. So. And also, when he came in today to tell me, and did like, a great job here, by the way. Of course. Um, let's put that on yeah. record. What didn't George say the other day that he was staying to be remote worker and he tagged Brendan in his story? What changed then? What changed? To be fair, I'm happy about it. I'm not going to lie. All jokes aside, all jokes aside, I'm happy about this because I have a feeling this is what happened. They're lying. This is what I feel happened. I have a feeling Brendan did fire George through a lawyer because he's a coward. Then because he has no form of social awareness, because he's obviously divorced from reality, because he has no heart, no soul, right? Because he's a godless human being, he goes out the next day and buys a lime green car and everybody goes crazy. Again, do what you want with your money. No one's pocket watching. But optics wise, that looks crazy. When you fire somebody through a lawyer because you can't afford to pay them on, allegedly, and then you go and buy a lime green car that's one of the most in-demand cars at the moment and you pay double the fucking retail price for it, people are going to be a little bit aggrieved by it, especially when they think George is a vulnerable guy and whatever it may be, and they might think he's a bit redacted or special needs and shit. They're going to have more sympathy for him, even though I don't think he is and he kind of leans into it. That's a story for another day. He does fire him. He gets publicly shamed into rehiring him, right? And then in a rush to try and make himself look like a good guy, he fires off like everybody's wrong, doesn't know what they're saying, without the knowledge that Brian can obviously confirm that he did fire him. Cool, it happened. But I think, luckily for George, he has some real people in his ear, and maybe George actually was keeping an eye on the Reddit, because I saw on the Reddit, even I left comments on the Reddit. I left comments on the Reddit, I said stuff on my live stream, and I saw other people say stuff on the Reddit the same way, and somebody, some one guy made a post actually. Let me actually find it. This one guy made a post on the Reddit where he basically pleaded with George and said, please, whatever you do, don't go back to Thick Boy. I think he said that. So people made posts on the Reddit. Again, the Reddit, according to Brendan, is toxic. They're all there. They're all fucking child abusers and they do all this sort of nonsense. He invents all these stories to discredit people who have some genuine right pushback and criticism about him, right? They kind of frames them all as bad, evil people. But the Reddit actually was telling George, hey, whatever you do, don't accept this other job offer from Brendan. Run a mile. Here's the post. See, here's the post. Here, this is the post. Somebody actually posted this on the Reddit. Look at this. Look what they said here. Re George, remember this when you will be fired very, very soon. 
We all meow down here. You will too, right? Look at the caption the person writ. Look at this. Somebody actually went out of their way to actually give George a bit of advice. Listen, it says, George, I watched the one and only podcast you were on from last year and most cats on here won't or didn't watch. I did because I wanted to know more about you as a human being. Everything... Um, everybody gives you shit rightfully so because you talk shit to Marg to defend your very stupid, greedy, selfish... Big, big up wingers dingers. Is Chang's hiring? I'm pretty sure George would have an amazing career behind the friars. <laughs> to be fair, I'm not going to lie. I don't think he could do that. I think he would actually be a detriment to the people around him and to maybe his own safety operating that kind of equipment. I'm not going to lie. Like, I don't think he has the IQ to do that job. No offense to the kid. No offense to the kid, but I don't think he has the possible to do that, to be honest. I think he's one of those people that if he's not a genius behind the computer, I think manual, you know, service industry jobs, he can't do it. I think he has to be one of those dudes who has to either find his lane in his own little niche or something or be a genius behind a computer on a phone. I don't think he could do those kind of like, you know, could you imagine George working behind a bar? Can you imagine George working in a busy restaurant? Can you imagine George working actually at P.F. Chang's? Like, how busy those P.F. Chang's are and shit. Can you imagine him during the fucking dinner rush and stuff? Having to... I don't know. I don't think that would work out. Personally. But I could be wrong. It continues. Um, everybody gives you shit, rightfully so, because you talk shit to Mark to defend your very stupid and greedy and selfish materialistic boss. But for me personally, after I watched, my heart hurts for you and for your family. You don't have a lot of money and you come from a very poor family who has been struggling for your entire life. Your dad is very ill and suffering tremendously. Your mom is taking care of the kids that aren't even hers. Cats don't know, but you are a very sweet, funny, self-aware, intelligent dude. I can tell that you are definitely on Addies or some kind of shit, which is why the cats always say that you're always acting weird and twitching on one podcast and you are on substances, obviously. I don't blame you, though. So I, I would, too, if I was in your if if I had your life. You know, what? I'm surprised by that. Were you guys aware of that? Do you remember those clips of George like doing these weird things? Were you guys aware that he was on Addies and shit? I didn't know that. I just assumed he had little ticks. I just assumed he had like a Tourette's or something. I didn't know he was on like Addies or pills and shit. Did you guys think that as well? Or were you guys aware of that? That he might be on some sort of prescription drugs or medication or something? I had no idea that was the case. I just thought he, was, he had like ticks or some shit. Who knows? It continues. All of us cats are saying is that you are working for a very greedy and inhumane, selfish and extremely narcissistic piece of shit. He, Bert and Chin took advantage of you and lied to you about helping you to receive a life-changing operation with your skin removal surgery. I honestly believe Bert and that piece of shit crap that you have donated should have donated financially to help your struggling family as a gesture to help a fellow human being, especially a fan who worship these false idols. You deserve better, man, and I hope you and your family are going to be okay. My heart hurts for all of you. When the dark day finally comes, we welcome you to go scorched earth. So guys were telling him, hey, run for the hills. Brendan is not your friend. Make sure you run for the fucking hills. So he was being warned by the fans out there who are usually the ones who don't have a lot of time for Brendan in the first place. But they even saw that this guy was getting taken advantage of. So maybe my theory is Brendan did fire him. Brendan did lie about firing him. Brendan did rehire him. But then George maybe said, you know what? I'm going to step away. I think he saw the reaction to what happened. He saw how Brendan acted towards him, especially because imagine, George actually is a fan of Brendan. He's actually a fan of T-Fat K. He actually looks up to these guys. And if you know anything about Brendan and his interaction with fans, he hates his fans. He doesn't like that his fans look like George. He wants his fans to look like David Goggins or something. I don't know what his idea of his fans are, but he actually hates that his fans are like, usually chubby, usually um, dudes, usually Mexican dudes as well. He, he, he doesn't like it. I don't know why he doesn't like the fact that he has a big chubby fan base of like Mexican guys that go to his shows. He wants his, his fans to be like, I don't know, to look like Alex Pereira or some shit. 
He wants us to be fucking badasses and look like Luke Rockhold. I don't know what his idea of his fans are, but this was never going to be a long-term relationship because deep down, he despises that his fans are look like fucking George. He doesn't want front, he doesn't want formerly obese fans. He wants all his fans to be like beasts or businessmen like him. To have like sharp suits, to work for Porsche, Ferrari, to be like these startup guru guys, to be like he wants his fans to be like Jake Paul and Logan Paul. That's what he wants. He wants those type of guys to be his fans for some reason. But the fans he has, he doesn't take them for granted. He does he doesn't take um you know, he doesn't um, appreciate them for who they are and stuff. So let's go back to the video. Uh blah, blah, blah. But uh he came in today, me and him talked in person just to tell me like if it's gonna be a part-time thing, like I'd rather just go somewhere full-time. I was, I get that, dude. I get that. You know? Yeah, love yeah. Georgie. Ah, so that's the truth. The truth is, he fired him, rehired him, because he got shamed and he felt embarrassed, and he went to rewrite the narrative and make sure he's a good guy. And then he offered him part-time. So what BGL said was true. He was getting knocked down to like part-time hours or something. Right. And obviously, George said it's not because he wants to stay in L.A., I'm assuming he doesn't want to work part time. It's not going to be enough money. So then Brennan said, yeah, you got to leave them because I can't offer anything more. So technically, you couldn't afford him still. So so technically, it's kind of still true. You couldn't afford to pay him, but then you still go and pay for your new car. And then you have your wife that doesn't work buying Balenciaga and Gucci every day. I would be, I would be so mad. I would be so mad. <laughs> well, that's that's a win. That's the goal to go from here. That, to, to and it's it. hard, you know. He's twenty two. He's never. This is his first job, really. Yeah. He's so he's, he's coming. Yo, big up, um, Matty boy. Matty boy. No, you're right. Um, embarrassed to admit, I used to regularly watch the show during fats or whatever period. You know what? Unironically, I think people in the chat could even admit the show was actually kind of decent when Malik and Chappelle came on there. It was always, it kind of fell off anyway, but it actually got rejuvenated when Chappelle and Malik went on there. Why? Because Malik and Chappelle were like, especially when it first started, they were laughing at Brendan more so. It was quite funny. Even the Reddit was quite, was loving it because of the times that they would both be looking at each other when Brendan would fuck up a word and they'd both be cackling and shit. But over time, you saw that Brendan didn't like that. He didn't actually want to have a comedy podcast where people laughed at him. He wanted to be like the main guy and you know, he's the one delivering the funnies, but he doesn't like to get laughed at. He doesn't really like getting roasted and stuff. It's not really his thing. He kind of takes it personally. So over time, you saw the guys kind of chill with the roasting and laughing, and then it turned into just a boring show again because clearly, you know, you could see that he had a conversation with him to the side or he made it very clear by his reaction that he didn't enjoy getting laughed at. That's why the show kind of went to shit. So it actually was good. That, that period was good. But over time, Brendan obviously kind of stamped the fun out of that show. So unfortunately, that's what happened. Um, let's continue here. Oh, what, what he said here? Um, what he said here? What he said? Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Assad. The head of North, the, the head of Ferrari North America. <coughs> Sorry. Commander Rock Jackson. Um, Frack Fix says... He doesn't have a Mexican fan base, though. There's, that's why Green Up is so confusing. No, but that's the thing, though, Frack Fig. If you look at Brendan's um, meet and greets videos that he does, there's a lot of Mexican -y type. Again, maybe it depends where he performs. If he's performing in like Covina and stuff, maybe there's a high concentration of people from that part of the world there. But if you look at his videos when he does his meet and greets, his fans look like that. Like, I don't know if they're all Mexican. Some of them could be from other parts of Central America, but they look kind of like from that area. And I've always wondered why. Maybe because they think he's Mexican himself. I don't really know why the reason. Maybe because he's married to that woman. Who knows? But he does actually have a weird amount of people that are from that place that look like that. But he doesn't like them anyway. He doesn't even like his Mexican family. You know? That's the problem. His fans are Mexican, but he actually doesn't like his Mexican family. You know? <laughs> was you're from london you can't tell who's mexican or not again you're right i can't tell who's mexican or not but they don't look white is that is that is that okay to say they don't look white i'm not fucking disparaging them i'm not being rude to them i'm not fucking insulting them i'm just saying the fans i see in video clips of brendan doing meet and greets with these fans they look like those type of guys 
from that particular region of the country, of the world. They could be from Guatemala, they could be Honduran, they could be from Nicaragua, wherever they're from, they don't look like they're from fucking Arizona. They don't look like they're from fucking Mississippi. They don't look like they're from fucking Philadelphia, all right? They look like they're from that part of the world. And for whatever reason, Brendan doesn't necessarily like that they look like that, even if they're not Mexican, even if they're white. The fact that they're chubby and they look a bit geeky and nerdy Brendan doesn't like it, okay? Let's put the Mexican thing to one side. They're not Mexican, okay? Forget they're Mexican. Brendan, for some reason, has this idea of what his fans look like. And whenever you... And it, maybe, again, maybe I'm being a little bit... Maybe I'm being a little bit too critical. Maybe he's just awkward around his fans and he gets uncomfortable being around people. But I've seen enough meet and greets video footages where he just looks a bit weird. He kind of looks a bit uncomfortable. Like, he's kind of upset. Like, you know, like... Like, who, who are these people? Who are these guys? You know what I mean? Like, he, he just doesn't like it. It's weird. Because those are your fans. Like, it doesn't matter what your fans look like. They're the ones that are fucking allowing you to have the life that you have. Like, why are you... Why are you treating them like this for? Why are you acting as if, like, they're not good enough for you? Like, it's weird. It's bizarre. It's very, very odd. Because the people that come out to his shows, I would say, are actually his actual fans. Because if you're somebody now of, of, of age and you have the internet and you still actively root for Brendan, that means you're an actual fan. Despite all the documentaries, despite the streams like mine, despite all the other channels that exist out there that rip Brendan apart, if you actually pay money to go and see him perform somewhere and you pay money to do a meet and greet because he charges for them, you're actually a hardcore fan and he should be honoring you he should be fucking hugging you every day because you're the ones that actually allow him to have the life that he has to be able to afford to buy another fucking lime green car that's actually something amazing that all these kids and all these guys sorry go to his shows with their girlfriends with their partners with their friends despite all the bad things that are said about him and they still are his fans that's being that he should be really like honoring and fucking respecting and being really appreciative of but he's not he actually doesn't like it. He wants his fans to, what, look like Luke Rockhold? Huh? It's like, why, why is that? Why, why? I don't know. It's, it's bizarre. I find it bizarre. But hey, what do I know? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm in straight out 22 yeah. from his background. So it's like, he's just getting more experience. That's all it is. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I told him when I talked to him, I said, this is all, this is good. It's that Jocko Willick thing. Good. 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 Now, oh, Easier good. Said than oppor done, but yeah. opportunity to, to even get better and build a bigger skill set. Look, when I, as an actor, um, I had seven yeses in my fucking career and everything else was a no. And what, so I had an acting teacher say this to me. <laughs> said, yeah. Why are you making it about you? We don't care about your acting career. It doesn't exist anymore. You don't act anymore, brother. Your acting career went away the moment that fucking ex-girlfriend said you raped her. It is what it is. There is no acting career. Allow it. We don't want to know, bro. Imagine making this about you somehow is fucking incredible. That's you know, says so like, oh, this woman was crying because she hadn't worked, and said he goes, yeah, it's real hard. It's a bitch, right? It's a bitch. Um, here's what you got to look at when you go in for a job, an acting job or any fucking job, and you're interviewing for a company. Take hey, hey, hey. What job have you had outside of acting? What job have you had outside of playing adult make believe? This is when I get really hot and heated. I don't understand why they like to LARP as if they're like the common everyday man. You're not. That's why people enjoy your content. Actually, you know what? Leaning into the fact that you are somewhat privileged, leaning into the fact that you have this silly, crazy career that allows you to bloody tell dick jokes on stage is actually why people want to listen to you. Because you want to be, you know, taken away from the thinking about the struggles of your everyday life. Them guys trying to pretend as if they're like, just like you, just like the regular dude on the street making a living. It's like, huh? What do you know about job interviews? You, 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 you played adult make-believe, bro. Like you, you, you work on a podcast three hours a week or if that. Come on, man. Interviews. What? You have a dad that allegedly works for the CIA. Come on, bro. Come on. Take this uh, mindset. They have a problem. That problem is they need someone to fill a need, fill a gap. Be the solution to that problem. If yeah. you come in and you're the actual solution to that problem and you're solving problems they didn't even see, 
like Chin. Chin is a good example. Chin came in, I don't know how many years ago, and he put uh, something over around. <laughs> Using Chin as an example of what a good employee looks like is a bad one because Chin has no life. Chin is really good at what he does, but he also has no life. His life revolves around working. He's the worst person to kind of judge what a good employee looks like because he has no life and they take advantage of that. They take advantage of the fact that he has no life outside of work so that he can do just about anything and everything. And of course, part of him also probably likes the fact that he's so reliant, relied upon because it gives him some level of purpose because he obviously is somebody that also likes to work, a bit of a workaholic. He probably gets a lot of value from it and identity from it, blah, 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 blah. Cool. But let's not use him as an example of what a good employee looks like. Let's be a little bit, let's be a, let's be a if we're going to pretend to be empaths, and we're going we're gonna to be pretend to be in touch with our feelings and too emotional and stuff. Let's understand that maybe Chin isn't reflective, isn't representative of how regular people treat jobs of regular employee, of regular employees out there. He's a little bit of a freak in that regard, and they take advantage of that freak freakness to get the most out of him because he has no life, and they can make him work around the clock and stuff. And I have a feeling now. Honestly, I agree. I think Severa Design was the person that said it. Severa Design was the one that said it. I'm actually agreeing with Severa Design. The fact that these guys act the way they do, the fact that they treated George the way they treated George, I'm now of the thinking, I don't think Chin actually gets paid what he should get paid. I think Chin definitely gets underpaid. I think the fact that they take advantage of their employees the way they do, the fact that they don't respect their work the way they do, the fact that they dismiss and dis, you know dispose of them the way that they do, the fact that they treat them the way they do, most likely Chin isn't getting paid what he's due to get paid, which is awful. Which is awful you think about it because he works around the clock, he gives his life to that fucking job and what? He owns stocks in a company that doesn't do much. And he probably doesn't get paid as much as he should do as a base salary. I'm pretty much certain of it. On your neck, right? He had he was wearing a he was wearing like a hard drive, and he goes, "I'm your guy. This is what I can oh, do." Oh, when he got hired, he was at the and, lab. And, and Chin Chin is Chin is a guy who, no matter what any any crisis we've been through. By the way, remember this. Remember this. Remember this. Remember this. When Chin gets fired, remember this clip. <laughs> when Chin eventually gets fired too, remember this clip. Even though I don't think they should fire Chin, even though I think Chin is the most important person at Thick Boy, maybe even more important than Brendan, because if Chin leaves, no one else, they're, they're never going to find one producer who's going to do what Chin does by himself. He does the job of probably two people, maybe even three. No one else would do their job and put up with them as people and work with them and have their reputational damage. No one's going to do that. So I honestly do think you should keep abreast of this conversation. Remember it, save it in your memory bank when Chin eventually gets fired. <laughs> Whatever it is, this motherfucker would always say to me, Brian, stay pro positive. Brian, stay positive. Brian, stay positive. Or, or just he's the rock. He's the fucking rock. Dwayne no matter Johnson. what. Always here. Hmm? Dwayne Johnson. He's... Go on, Brendan. Say something nice about him too. You see how Brendan looked down? Brian's sucking him off and Brendan kind of looked down and didn't say nothing. Uh-oh. Again, I could be reading too much into it. I could be reading too much into it. I could be fucking bored. I could be fucking, you know, um, devoid of any friends, living in my parents' basement, fingers covered in Cheeto dust. I could be making this all up, but that isn't a good sign. Brian is sucking off chin. He's sucking off. He's giving him a good little blowy. And Brendan doesn't fucking get on his knees too. Bit odd. You know what, Chin? You're the Asian Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Only not as thick. That's sick. And yeah, probably have good. a better heart. Not a, not a better heart. Uh, nothing I mean, from Brendan. He nothing Dwayne from Brendan. Physically, yeah. nothing his, from his Brendan. He's, push, he's pushing juice things. Right nothing from Brendan. He's, he's pushing things. Yeah. Nothing God from Brendan. Him. Yep. Nothing from Brendan. Yeah, no, love. Oh, I love George. See? Uh oh. Uh oh. Chin, be worried, brother. Your day's coming soon, bro. You're gonna meet Lex as well soon. You're going to meet Lex too. Lex Luthor's going to come and knocking. Lex Luthor's going to come knocking and tell you, hey, Chin, 
Go back to fucking Korea. <laughs> Chin, you got all the time in the world to go to fucking Korean barbecue. You got all the time in the world to go fishing now. <laughs> Chin, your day is coming, bro. Be worried. Be keep your head in the swivel, brother. Your day is coming soon. Everybody keeps getting fired around him. Your day is coming, bro. <laughs> Georgie. So. I wish there was a cooler story for you guys, but. Yeah. That's it. Georgie's good. Yeah. Chin sad. Chin, how you sad. feeling? What do you have to say about it? That's just sad. You know, I got attached yeah. to him. So. Yeah. Of course. We all did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Hey, Chin knows his bread's buttered. Chin didn't want to say too much. It's just sad. We got attached to him. That's like he's a fucking dog. We got attached to him like he was a fucking office dog. What? <laughs> yeah. Chin sad. Chin, how you sad. feel? What do you have to say about it? That's just sad, you know, I got attached yeah. to him, so. Yeah. Of course. Oh, yeah. look at the girl right. looking down. The girl didn't say nothing. What's her name again? Sh Shiraz. Is that like a, is, is, is that a wine? Shiraz, is that a name? Sh Shiraz, Shiraz? Isn't Shiraz a wine? I don't know. But yeah, this girl doesn't say much as well. She kind of looks down. Kind of awkward. <laughs> ah, what yeah. a fucking joke. Yeah. yeah. But he'll be, we'll, we'll bring him back in. Oh, yeah. Periodically. He's going to be around LA for a while. Is you're going yeah. to bring him back in <laughs> to do what? <laughs> They're going to bring him back in to do what I love when they say these things. Did they say the same thing about Theo? Theo's always going to be coming back. Theo never came back again. George is never coming back, bro. George is never coming back. That's important. Um, anyway. <laughs> all right. So um, anyway, <laughs> let's take I'm going to cry. Let's take a break. Let's take a <laughs> let's take a 30 second uh, weep break and take a hot weep break. <laughs> Uh, How about uh, changing lanes? How about the, are you familiar with uh, Gypsy Rose? Oh my God, of course, Gypsy fucking Rose talk. Anyway, you had your own Gypsy Rose. George was your Gypsy Rose and look what you did to him. Look what you did to him. You had your own Gypsy Rose. George was your Gypsy Rose and you treated him like shit. Oh, oh, oh. God almighty. God almighty. So, what do we think? Um, what do we think here? Exactly, Josie. Chin, keep your resume up. NJ Ranger, I bet they will try to do this shit with AI because they can understand the technology. Um, <laughs> Severe Design says, let's think critically here, Fickies. Notice Brian keeps referring to George's dismissal of information as this misinformation, but it turned out to be true. Exactly. That's the thing, Severe Design. He keeps saying everybody got it wrong, but everything that happened on the Reddit was right. And if anything, you know what this also proves? This proves that Reddit runs a fucking podcast. Even though they act like they don't read comments and all this stuff, that Reddit runs this fucking podcast. The Reddit actually has got these guys on strings. They're actually the ones behind <laughs> all the shit that happened. <laughs> They actually are the ones that are like moving them around like fucking puppet puppets. It's actually kind of crazy. They don't read comments. Brendan posts and ghosts, but that Reddit runs them. They're on fucking strings. That's the actual truth of it. Can you imagine? Wow, they've actually proved how powerful that Reddit actually is. Fucking hell, Bobby Lee is actually Bobby Lee runs the Fire and the Kids subreddit. Bobby Lee runs it and he runs a podcast. That's the truth of the matter, isn't it? Bloody hell, man. What an absolute horror show. Absolute horror show from all involved. Absolute fucking horror show. 